Hello, I'm David Eicholtz with David Richard Gallery located in New York City, and today I'm with uh, Julio Valdez, and we're standing in, uh, with his paintings behind us. We're in his exhibition, uh, solo show with the gallery. It's actually his first solo show with our gallery, but certainly not his first in New York City. So uh, Julio is uh, from the Dominican Republic, and um, you moved to New York in about 93. Exactly. So um, he's been up here for a long time, and uh, and you actually live here and in New York City. I mean, in Washington, Washington D.C., but you also go back to the Dominican Republic a fair amount. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what we're going to talk about, and what I decided to focus on, was a current series. And these are not necessarily brand new paintings. Some have not ever been shown in New York before. Um, right. Julio happened to have just been in the most recent uh, Venice Biennale. And, uh, and his paintings were included. And so uh, one of these was in the Biennale, uh, but has not been presented yet here in the U.S. It exactly, it has some meaning. So uh, we'll be, it's a debut of this one, but also um, these paintings are basically, I think, uh, span the last seven or eight years or so. About, yeah. And so these are very current and they represent sort of the diversity of this whole body of work which you began I think we decided about 14 years ago, about mid 2000s, exactly. 2000, around 2007 or so, and um, and they're all dealing with water, and the palettes are fairly similar, and um, and that's what I think that is I, I want to focus on initially is let's just talk about these water paintings and the significance of it. Um, it's obviously been a series that you've been working on for quite some time mm -hmm. and uh, that inspires you a great deal and there's been a lot written about uh, Julio in fact and, uh, and there's a, a really nice book out that we have available here at the gallery it's a nice uh, very large uh, coffee table type book but it's full of uh, several wonderful writings and essays very in-depth it's in uh, Spanish and in English and so it's a really nice uh, book for you to learn a lot about his work. And it's really, it's, it, it coincided with the retrospective. Yeah. This, the, it's the, written as a retrospective. Well, anyway. yeah, the book was, was uh, written in 2009. It was published and, and mostly came out in 2010. And this was a fresh series then, yes. Yeah, it was a fresh series. And, and it was uh, covered about 20 years from my work from 1989 to mm -hmm. 2009. And then the book came out at the end of 2009, 2010, was a lot of presentations and things. Uh, and the book cover, I, I had three shows that when it started really showing this war is serious, mm -hmm. uh, in the West Coast, uh, Latin American Masters, and, and in New York, uh, and also at El Museo del Barrio. Uh, but uh, yeah, I can't believe that it's been 10 years, 11 years since the book came out already. Yeah, and, and well, they've been very popular, and you have different sort of sub-series within each, exactly. within this whole series, yeah. like these two larger ones are sort of a, a sub-series, mm -hmm. and there's different mm -hmm. versions and variations of them. Mm -hmm. And so what I'd like to dive into is talk a little bit about water. Well, obviously, Dominican Republic's an island, <laughs> and so- Surrounded by water. Surrounded by water. <laughs> and, and so is New York City. <laughs> and you, well, that's true. <laughs> Uh, but it's not quite the Caribbean, and, <laughs> exactly. um, but uh, and so for people who don't know where it is, it is in the Caribbean, and so um, and it, it butts up to the Atlantic Ocean. So, but you obviously grew up as a kid then around water constantly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and these don't look anything like your earlier paintings, although you can tell it's sort of your vibe. I mean, there are mm -hmm. a lot of other things, nuances that we'll get into as we kind of pan around to some of the other paintings and uh, and talk to you. But what I'd like to focus on, and the reason why I started with this corner, kind of put these together, is because they, they have a dialogue that relates very well. First of all, the palettes. And you, the, your blues and greens are just incredible. And of course, anyone who's been to the Caribbean, that's what everybody <laughs> takes away, is that incredible, unusual green color mm. that's almost like coppery. And, mm. um, and it's just so vibrant and, and beautiful. At the same time, it's so soothing and calm. And uh, what's interesting in these paintings is you capture the calm, but also the energy of water. And the energy that I'm talking about is the fact that these are really very abstracted, you know, mm -hmm. um, and which appeals to, to me a great deal because taking something that's nature and then abstracting it, geometric and abstract artists have been doing this for years, yeah. you know, decades, centuries, and because there's just something about it that when you zero in on some aspect yeah. of nature, um, it inherently becomes abstract and it's easy mm -hmm. to abstract even mm -hmm. further. 
But what always catches me about your paintings is how well you capture what always mesmerizes people about water, which is the reflections. Mm -hmm. And especially when people are in the water, like these two that we're surrounded by um, and the fish behind you, um, when there's movement, there's all these lower currents and mid currents and, and what's on top. And so there's just so much depth when you look at water. You know, there's not just the surface where you have all the dancing of the light and the reflections, mm -hmm. but because of the complete transparency of water, it just seems like um, when you look in, it, it's so hard to determine where things are. And you even capture that really well when you see figures like a hand or a foot or whatever, uh, or it looks like this one's got like a dog or something in it, um, that it's, it's so distortive in terms of how far or how near something is. And so you've managed to capture that. You know, but at the same time, it still has this complete utter familiarity. Yeah. When you see you know, a person in there or something, even though you can't discern the person 100% or the fish, you know, but you've managed to really capture that and bring in all this great color from the reflections and what have you. And I think that's yeah. what's been, it seems like they would be very hard to paint. <laughs> that's what I'm kind of getting <laughs> well, at. I, can, I couldn't do it. I, I can tell you that. I can barely describe it. Yeah, because of my, <clears throat> My interest in color and abstraction, um, I, I started one of the reasons why I just keep working and finding like sort of like new avenues and new ways of exploring these uh, water-related uh, abstractions uh, is because uh, it's very layered. Uh, for instance, when you formally, as a painter, when you, you know, like Jasper Jones says, the things the mind thinks you know, you know, like, yeah. like the talk, things. Well, you think that you know water because it's so familiar, so universal, everybody um, can relate to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially the waters in the Caribbean are very loaded with, <laughs> you know, political history and, and, and what happened. And, and, um, well, that's the thing with yours is you get a lot of you know. So, of but, 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 but when you formally <laughs> yeah. really just look at the water, it's very different looking from outside than being in the water. When you are in the water, the um, sense of perspective, the sense of time, completely is put in hold in a pause, and that's part of my interest. And uh, for instance, the parts of, of your body that you see perfectly fine when it's in water get distorted. Mm -hmm. So I use the, the space of water, the, the scenario of water, like a, like, a, like a stage, you know, in which you can play with different um, assumptions and things that you think you know the mind. And I like to create a, a sense of time not yet defined, like a sense of perspective that is completely like you don't know what's up, what's down, what's near, what's because everything gets completely kind of out of whack. Like right. it's, you know, you just. And I think I thought yeah. there was one. I don't think we have one here, but you have painted somewhere. Um, you do show the intersection of uh, a person, part of the person's body, above water and below water, and you see that distortion. Yeah, well, like like in this one. Yeah, but uh, we don't see the person above. All of these are yeah. you're capturing their action below. It's like yeah. that person's reaching under yeah. the water. We'll turn to that one uh, later, but it, it's from the same scale and type as these for people who are wondering yeah, what we're pointing yeah. at. These particular pieces that were a part of the, the Venice Biennial series that I prepared, there, uh, you finished them just about two years ago. Uh, these two and that, and that one there. Because uh, these were the type that were in the bi the Biennale. Exactly, yes. yeah, yeah. I, I prepared and which those. Which one? I can't remember. And then they, they hanged that one, and they were uh, going to hang that one, but at the end, we, they didn't have enough space, you know, in the, in, right. the, in the area that we have, the, the, the building that we had assigned. And so that was all the time, but I prepared all three of them for that purpose. Right. And then, um, but uh, water, you know, the Caribbean waters are different than other waters that I've been exploring, you know. But what happened here is that um, there is a lot of um, uh, opportunities to explore the surface, break the painting surface into, um, you know, creating these distortions 
and this abstraction that is um, the sense of perspective that is more like illusory, you know? It's, I'm sorry, what? Illusory, like an illusion. Yeah, illusory. Like an yeah. illusion. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a painting, uh, you know, pigment over a surface. But right. you think that you are seeing things in perspective. Oh, yeah. So yeah. the pattern is breaking the pattern of, of water. It allows me to explore color well, in a way that is different. The way the water just sort of dances and moves because of wind and, and surface motion, it helps you do that. You get all these wonderful different sort of motifs and, and patterns as you look at water from different distances and angles. But that's the nice thing about water. It's like you said, that's why even modernists, um, when, you, when they paint the water, it just there's a certain gestalt with water, you know, and, and part of it's its adjacency, you know, with other things and landscape. And so people inherently know it when they see something that's sort of blue or aqua, mm. but what, yeah, what you're saying is there's so much more beyond it. Yeah. It still gives you the but ability I, to play with it and, yeah. and, and, and abstract something and explore that a lot further. Exactly. But have you seen the water, like the, 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 when I use red, completely red, I mean, I have a triptych that is... I actually is, love those, actually. <laughs> it's an abstraction that is completely, yeah. and, and, and it, it psychologically throws you off because uh, red waters, but... And then, you know, it, there are subtle commentaries about, um, about um, you know, water is where the, it's the scenario, it, it, it's where the, the two cultures first got in contact, you know, the Aboriginal culture, the indigenous culture, and then the European culture. When the right. Spaniards first came to what we call the New War, all right, America, they came to that territory that is now the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Right. They came to the Hispaniola. I mean, that's where they actually, they, the, the mm -hmm. encounter happened. That's where the first knee was placed in somebody's neck that was left unable to breathe. So those waters are the same waters that mass tourism now finds so attractive to come there and you know, but under all that beauty and all that um, majesty of nature, when you really look, <laughs> there's a lot more going on, different depth and different sense of time, you know, and different sense of perspective and history. And so my work, uh, it's more about, so it's done with a different agenda than the impression, impressionists. You know, the impressionists like Monet and, and you know, all those other artists, um, they were like more interested in, in, in from a formal way of how things look, you know, in the water, when they yes. paint water. For me, it's more of a creating um, a, a stage where all I can come in as an artist on the formal aspect of painting, you know, you're actually creating a, 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 surf, a painted surface, mm -hmm. but also the conceptual part of it, you know, and the uh, socio-political background. For instance, mm -hmm. Baroque, you know, the Baroque language, that's the language of the Caribbean because there's so many layers of cultures and traditions, you know, from the uh, religious point of view, from the uh, political point of view, social, you know, and even in the arts, you know. So there's so many layers. There's also, a, you know, a mercantile aspect. Yes. I mean, especially in that part of the world with all mm -hmm. the tourism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, which yeah, is... Yeah, but, but so it's, when, you, when you look at And the at trading it, and all the trading that goes on. And, and, and yes, and that's right. But, 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 and, but tourism sometimes, it, it's, it has its own... The thing about mass tourism is that it doesn't acknowledge doesn't even care about the actual things that are happening there. It's all very, it's like Disney World, you know? It's like it presents you an aspect very You're talking polished. about tourists who, who paint or, or photograph the, the place. So yeah. yeah, there's a difference for people who come from the outside. If I'm hearing you, it sounds like what you're saying is that the people who come from the outside who aren't uh, from the Caribbean, um, to enjoy the Caribbean, they sort of want to capture that moment mm -hmm. irrespective of the history behind it. And what you're saying is uh, Dominican and Caribbean artists like yourself and, mm -hmm. and people who grew up there, um, the, the water means something more than just mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. that moment. Exactly. And the beauty For of instance, it. these same waters where like, I go and enjoy with my son and he often appears, abstraction of his body appears uh, in my images. 
Um, these are the same waters where, like, you know, <laughs> Christopher Columbus came and mm -hmm. so much blood had happened and the slave trade started. That's, that's Is just, that why some of those paintings were red? Yeah. Okay. Psychologically, that those but were, also seemed earlier. I've never seen them but, in person. Yeah, but, but also uh, I am rooted in contemporary aesthetics. Remember, I'm living now in the 20th and 21st century. I started my career in 19. 88, 89, my first solo show at the end of the 20th century, and then been working here uh, for like most of my life now, a little longer than I was in. So I'm rooted in contemporary aesthetics, but right. my background, you know, it's like with Fredo Lamb's, you know, background, it's Caribbean. And so when I'm working in New York about this, 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 this subject matter, not only I'm interested in exploring surfaces, that are completely from the current and exploring color, but also this subject matter provides me with a, like an aquatic theater, you know, like a, like a stage, a big stage where I can f zoom in particular aspects of the culture. Right. But it's still contemporary painting because after, after all is being said, I'm, I'm a painter in New York City, you know. Right. <laughs> but, um, and that, pers that gives me this voice that is very unique, very mine. I'm not trying to fake it. It is, I, I feel it, I live it, I explore it, but uh, it gives me kind of like a different, uh, sort of like validity, you know, like an edge. Because right. I, I, I understand it from the inside out, you know. Uh, and uh, one aspect that, you know, it's, it's also important in my work is that there's always, um, a, a reverence for nature, you know, it's for a what? It's a, like a reverence, like oh, a reverence, sense of the yeah. sacred, like, because, you know, sometimes there's a mystery there that we had to deepen in and, but you don't want to overload the, the viewer, you know? Right. Uh, well, that's why these, I think, were a big departure from your earlier works, which we don't have any in this show, but in the book, uh, people can see a lot of them where they are, it seems more, um, indigenous symbols and, and, and a much more uh, density of sort of imagery mm -hmm. and a range of imagery in, in sort of a collage format or mosaic mm -hmm. sort of format and uh, which kind of picks up more on the what people would see formally when they go to the Dominican Republic and would see art in a museum or, mm -hmm. or in, you know, churches and what have you. But these you know, are a bit of a departure from that and, and do feel very contemporary. But yet, what's important, I think you're pointing out, is that there's a, a lot of depth behind this and that, you know, that's, you know, as an artist, that's what you're about. Mm -hmm. And we will pick some of that up as we go around. But while we're here, I wanted, you keep talking about surfaces, and that's one thing that I was really struck with when I look at your paintings. You, they are so flat, you know, they are so smooth. Mm -hmm. There's really, there's no texture, no buildup, no nothing. Which makes sense that you paint then in very thin layers of color and very dilute to mimic that translucency exactly. and transparency of the water. Yeah. And so that's very important. So these aren't impasto, even though they look highly textured. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just point. I want to point out to people who are watching this, and if they, <clears throat> you know, go on to any of the other avenues they have digitally to look at these and certainly we hope you would come in in, in person but uh, but for those who are living you know 10,000 miles away or whatever uh, but it, they're, they're really beautifully painted and it's just this wonderful you know uh, lush colors and density and, and what's so nice is the if you it's so hard to describe these in person that I won't even try and do that. I hate it when people do that. But, um, <laughs> but just needless to say, I mean, um, there's so much depth and density, but yet you talk about surfaces, and that's why I wanted to well, point out, it's you, your paintings really do emulate that conundrum or complexity of when exactly. you're looking at water. Exactly. Um, it's smooth and flat, but yet it doesn't there's depth. That. There's a lot of depth. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of depth there. And I think you, you really capture that amazing. And I think part of what it is too is, and I'm not calling you old, but <laughs> I think there is a maturity um, in these paintings that I think is mm. pretty spectacular. Um, Thank you. You know, because water is not easy to paint. 
even for yeah, but, you really know, well trained artists. It's yeah. really hard, but, and especially when the whole painting is water. Yeah. To hold a viewer's interest and and have it so that the eye carries around to the whole composition, and that's I think the spectacular thing about these because these are like what fifty by seventy two. They're pretty good sized paintings. Yeah. That's a lot of water. Yeah, like fifty six or something like that. Yeah. By yeah, but I just wanted to kind of plug that for people that these are pretty amazing um, in that regard. They're just mm. they're really beautifully well, executed. I, I can tell you that um, I, as a painter that you know when I started working on these pieces, I, I've been painting for over fifteen years professionally. I, what I understood was that I had to learn to paint again if I wanted to deal with that subject. So it was a completely breakthrough from the way I was painting before. And then boom, when I started dealing with this particular, I had mm -hmm. to forget everything that I had done and intuitively left what, it, what I can use for this and put the other things away. And one of the things that I understood was I wanted to render this particular subject matter in a cinematographic way. Like when you look at a big uh, film, you know, the screen, yes. like mm -hmm. in the theater, you see this and um, there's no texture. It's all, it's one white mm -hmm. thing, the surface where you're projecting all these things uh, and then it just feels like it's happening, but it's really flat, which is the perspective of contemporary art. It's flat. It's not the Renaissance perspective, you know, where the, there's a century, you know. So, and, and, and when you, again, when you look at the water and you're out of the water, it's different than when you submerge in the water. Mm -hmm. Things change completely or when you're under. And the sense of perspective, the sense of time, is not yet defined, you know? Mm -hmm. You're not sure. Uh, to capture that, I needed to forget about the bravura of painting. Like if you look at the surface of an impressionist uh, mm -hmm. painter, you go to the museum, you will see a lot of texture and a lot, a lot of like mm -hmm. show up with the brush. I needed to eliminate all that. It's noise and just try to do and like a mirage, like when you close your eyes and you imagine it and you open it and it's there. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the feeling that you get with the water. Well, like this, this other painting, the reason why I put this one here too, um, is because this one is incredibly smooth. And um, is this by chance, it's ink. Um, um, you call it, you said it's acrylic ink. It's called an acrylic ink, yeah. And so, but what is the support? It's not canvas. Is it it's acrylic? Mylar, or, mylar, it is mylar. Mylar and then yeah. a panel, uh, like a center panel. Yeah, because it is Sintra really panel. smooth. I mean, yeah, very smooth. smooth. And then it has a little bit of oil. Uh, and it's collagen. These parts are a very thin. Oh, there is? Know, a, okay. Yeah, mylar, oh mylar. Okay, well, you yeah. touched it, I didn't. Yeah, no, I did, I did. <laughs> well, because it's not really about, like, you know, the, the, uh, the technique mm -hmm. is in itself. It's like when you see in a no, great... No, but what you, know, you captured here, because of the translucency, and I think the fact that you used um, the acrylic ink and you diluted it out, obviously, mm -hmm. Uh, and then you were on this slippery surface, exactly. you know, where it puddled and pools. Yeah. Um, you know, watercolor is a, obviously a perfect thing to do for painting water. But, uh, but the other thing that I thought was great about this was um, I wanted to break up the greens curatorially and mm -hmm. also the scale. Because when you are in the Caribbean, you do see, you know, um, there's a lot of colors. What you see initially a lot of times is you'll see like an aqua mm -hmm. or something or sort of a copper sort of color, mm -hmm. you know, green color up close. And, but from a distance, you see it's blue. And you see areas where it's a brighter color here or there, depending on what's underneath it, the light mm -hmm. and all that. And I think that's why I kind of wanted to curate this so that when people, are, when you look at the water in the Caribbean, yeah, a lot of it is this really beautiful, unusual green color. But next to it is all these other colors and things mm -hmm. that are happening. And yeah. so here you'll see a person here, but then here's just there's the, the title of this one. Um, um, curious fish is curioso. So this the, is curioso. Yeah, yeah. so it's uh, you know curious fish, which I think is was really cute because it's exactly what you see. Yeah, yeah, they're very curious. Yeah. So they they want to just like <laughs> kiss yeah, you and say you hello. And, <laughs> and so, uh, but yeah, it, they really do play well together, and it's it's quite magnificent. But while we were standing here before we move, um, I wanted to talk about the surfaces because you kept mentioning that, mm -hmm. and also I wanted to talk a little bit about the formal aspect, and then again, particularly note this painting and the fact that you 
do use a diversity of materials to try and capture mm -hmm. and explore in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I also wanted people to realize not every painting in the show <clears throat> or that he does is this huge, although you do work large, you also work incredibly small. So we have things that are like 12 inches yeah. by 12 inches. <laughs> and so there are a lot of things that are very intimate in terms of detail uh, in his, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with his work. Um, so I think we're gonna go ahead and in, uh, move to the other area. What I'd like to do is encourage people who like the interview with Julio or other s similar interviews to please subscribe and uh, so that you can get, we do several of these a month with different artists and this way uh, if you subscribe on YouTube then uh, you'll be able to get notices of these when they come out, which we have a considerable of them. So we're gonna move to the, another part of the room and cover some other aspects of your work, okay? Great. <laughs>